All right, guys, we just pulled the SLV 90 2 in here. We're going to do a little bit of uh, winter maintenance on it. Even though it's the middle of winter, the doors are wide open because it's 65 degrees outside. Global warming, I swear. All right, so here's a quick little rundown of what we're going to do. These pins and bushings right here are shot. And I tried to change them this spring when I had it in here putting the injectors in. I was able to get this one out last year. I'm hoping it comes out this year, but that one over there was stuck. And it was stuck good. So I think we're going to try to lance it out. I'll uh, explain what that process is here in a minute. And then while we got it in here, I got a small oil leak and a small coolant leak back here somewhere. I'm going to try to tie into that and uh, find out what's going on. I think the oil leaks, the turbo uh, return line, and I think the coolant leak is the, uh, possibly a hose clamp going into the EGR cooler, but I can't really see, because it's down in there. I need to take the air box and a few other things out so we can get in there and see what we got and uh, go from there. So let's get started. All right, guys, I got the uh, bolts out to hold that in there. And this side here, just as I remember, it's going to work out. It's loose. This side over here, well, it's a whole nother story. It is stuck. It's loose through here because that's where it pivots. It's right here, but it's stuck from there. So we're going to take an air lance and blow a hole in it. You gonna to explain to us what an air lance is, Mr. Behind the Scenes? Well, what an air lance is, it's a little bit safer than a torch because it'll cut straight through and won't veer off and get into the main house. Well, it'll cut as straight as you shove that rod in there. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so if I'm off a We should bit, clarify this. It cuts <laughs> as straight as the operator. But you have control I have control over and the, I'm going off your lead. So you, are you trying to say you have control over the penetration? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do have control of that. <laughs> but the oh, way we do I hope, it, I hope we got a big enough rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, you got a Smurf rod. Yes, pretty little Smurf. So what's that rod. thing made out of? Uh, a little bit of magnesium, uh, carbide. So basically, and we're going to light that thing up like a sparkler, right? Yes, we are. And then it will be like a big sparkler. And then we're going to shove oxygen to it. Yep. A lot of oxygen. A lot of oxygen. And then you're going to take it and shove it straight through that hole. Straight. So are we going to take that grease fitting out and you're going to go straight in that grease hole? Probably going to be the best thing to do. All right. That sounds like a lot of fire smoking fun. Yes, it does. You ready? I'm, I'm ready. ready. Let's do it. All right, guys, real quick before we get started, a couple of precautions. We got this tied off to the crane. Not that it's going to go anywhere, just to be there. Be safe. We got... I don't have a true fire blanket, so we got some uh, welding jackets pinned up there to keep any fire from going back into that. We tied up the hydraulic lines to make sure they're good and clear. And this thing actually requires the welder to be hooked up. All the welder does is get the rod lit. Once the rod's lit, the welder's pretty much useless because then you shove oxygen into it and go on through. So I think we're about ready to blow a hole in this thing. I believe so. See if the old girl will start. No good old pick.
right guys, it's actually a new day in the shop. Couple obvious differences today. Yes, yes, I did, I did trim the beard. I know you guys noticed. <laughs> it is now cold and raining outside. Yep, it's nasty. I got me some extra help over there. But the biggest difference is yesterday we had a little issue and we ran out of oxygen and we now have more oxygen, which is why our, uh, our attempt was pretty pathetic yesterday, but <laughs> oh, it's gonna be spectacular today. You ready? Ready. Let's do this again. You gotta get your little floor protector thing down there. I got it. Oh, we need a bigger Bring one. Up. Ready to go. All right guys, a little bit of show and tell time. This is the pin that Aaron lanced out. See the big hole he blew all the way through it? This is the pin we didn't have to do that. The reason why that works is that you blow that hole out whenever it cools, it shrinks in on itself and loosens the, makes the diameter of that pin just small enough that it'll uh, go through there. And of course the heat don't hurt anything. Anymore. But the problem with these is, I don't know if you can see, but they're wore real bad right here, which allows dirt to get in there, which is all the squeaking and they won't hold, hold grease. So the next thing we got to do, I don't know if you can see, but right there is the bushing. The bushing's not actually wore that bad, but we're going to go ahead and replace them while we're out. And the trick to getting those out is we'll clean up the inside of that. Aaron's going to run about two or three beads around there. Whenever that bead cools, it'll struck that down, and hopefully we can dry that bushing right out. Hopefully. That's if the plan. Not, what are we gonna do? If it don't work, you taking your paper, your paperwork break? Yeah. You got to stop smoking your paper, you know that? I know. <laughs> I'll get a computer one of these days. <laughs> uh, if it don't work, it's his fault because he didn't put the beads in the right place, but that's what we're going to go with. So that's where we're at. So far, so good. bushing remover installer set up over here it's got this generic kit off amazon i use quite a bit but that'll go right inside there our lip will hit that hopefully we'll take a hammer just drive it out we'll find out
right guys there she is you know uh, trick worked pretty good at getting them out of there it probably would have worked better if we let it cool down more we're a little bit impatient but the holes look really good i was slightly worried about that with the amount of uh slop we had in them but uh they look they look perfect so the next trick to putting these back in is i got my bushings hid in a top secret location uh this is not the ideal scenario but it's better than nothing if you have some dry ice or some liquid nitrogen and you can freeze these things they work good i have neither one of those things all i have is a deep freeze so whew, that's cool yep definitely go we're gonna try that and see if we can get her beat in Look straight. Looks uh, high, like bass is high. Ass ends high. Wait, just a touch too much. Oh, right here. All right, guys, we got it in there. It was uh, quite the fight. Ideally, it'd be nice to have some sort of press set up. We don't have that. What we're gonna do is upgrade our beaten stuff. As you can see from this thing, we are a little bit rough on old China there. So this is, we're gonna upgrade to, this is our beaten stick. We drilled a hole in the end of it. We're gonna inset that bolt like so, weld that in there, and then our uh, bushing adapters will fit on the end of there. That should be much more substantial. Yes, it should. <laughs> Stay tuned to find out. We got our tool all made up. Check that out. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Pretty nice. I'm gonna ask you a random question. <laughs> are, are you straight? Pretty straight, <laughs> pretty straight. Okay. Blind man said he likes it. <laughs> hey, if it works, I'm not gonna judge. This is what we're gonna do. We got that. We're gonna put this one on there as an extra. Boom, boom, nut. That's what you call an industrial, half American, half China bushing installer. Woo, that's kind of hot. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, let's get it started with a small hammer. Start straight? I think it's so. I think so. I think it kind of works itself straight. Whew. I'm gonna let you have the honors. <laughs> I'm moving a lot better on this one, anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was my idea to kind of flapper wheel that out a little bit and my idea to go with the bigger uh cool. Okay, I'll put it back in here. You ready? Yep. All right, guys, there it is, undamaged. That one went in way easier. Must stay my Wheaties on that one, not for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm pooped from slinging the sledgehammer. We're gonna go grab us some lunch, come back, 
And uh, we'll finagle some pans in there. You getting hungry? You did a good job, dude. We got her. <laughs> Ow! All right, guys, we just got back from lunch. Good news, it was delicious. Was your corn dog good? All right, good deal. So, <laughs> how do I nicely say this? I go to the dealership. This is the same day I dropped the tractor off. I ordered two pins, two bushings. We got two bushings and one pin. I call over there. I'm like, where's my other pin? He's like, oh, you wanted two pins? I just was nice and said yes. So anyways, check this out. Nice and tight. Oh, yeah. I should keep all the dirt out of there. The bushing's actually got grease screws in it. The pin's just got a grease hole. So basically what we're gonna do is get this back together as far as we can until the other pin comes in, which may be later on today. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, we got this pin in, and I don't know if you can see that gap right there, but I don't think we're gonna have the proper shims to tighten this up. And the, the tighter you can get this, the more you help wear, um, and then you also help keep dirt out of there, and dirt's your enemy in this situation. So I really don't know for sure what we need because we don't have this pin in there, but I do know we're gonna need some thicker shims. So Master Machinist Aaron over here, we got a piece of quarter inch plate. We're gonna go ahead and cut out two shims. And then we got two of the thinner shims. Hopefully between that, we'll be able to find a combination to uh, make everything work. So we're gonna get those shims cut out. We're kinda gonna be on a little bit of holding pattern on this until we get the other pin. I'm gonna tear into the back side of this thing, see if I can figure out where the oil leak and the water leaks at. A little monkey over here, flying <laughs> around. <laughs> so, all right, back to work. All right, guys, give you a little bit of an update. Looky there, Aaron's got the first spacer made. Looks uh, looks almost factory, we'll have to say. Uh, Gunner and I have got the radiator and oil cooler pulled out of this thing. And I think we found both of our leaks. I think they're both right here together. So I'm getting here to show you guys. So the oil leak, it's really hard to see, but it's the return tube on the turbo. I'm not sure what's going on there. And the coolant leak is this hose clamp right here on the EGR cooler. I don't know if you guys can see down there the mess the oil's been making. But uh, neither one of them are major leaks, but they're both leaking enough that need to be fixed. So I'm going to scrounge around here and uh, see what I can come up with to get those fixed. All right, guys. It is the next day again. And yes, I switched hats. Thanks for noticing. Appreciate that. So... Let me go on a rant first thing this morning. Let me tell you. Engineers, I swear. I think this engineer spent probably close to $3.2 million getting this screw located up underneath this turbo in no man's land. So guys like me would give up, take it to the dealership and spend this fortune. Well, let me tell you, 
I'm an engineer myself. I got a redneck engineering degree. Check out that booger right there. What is that? <laughs> That's uh, about a four dollar wrench and about 20 cents worth of oxygen and acetylene and by golly, it worked like a charm. We got that booger out of there. Let me tell you. We Don't got... forget about the wire you burnt on that. Shh. <laughs> Just shh. <laughs> some things are some things are YouTube appropriate. See, look, yeah. well, you want to talk about no, your drill, you want to talk about your drill your press? Big wire. You want to talk about your drill press skills this morning? Turn around. Worked out. What, what's your shirt say? Nobody gets hurt. And what were you Did doing this morning? anybody get hurt? What were you doing this morning? I was drilling He holes. was holding a piece of metal with his fingers on the drill press. I already had the holes. I was just going through my it gasket. It doesn't matter. That's not, that's how, that's how people get hurt, <laughs> Mr. Keywit. All right. Enough of the nonsense. This is where we're at. Okay. So I got the turbo feed or drain tube out of there. And we're just not 100% certain if there's a crack right there. We think there may be a crack. And since this thing's such a booger to get out of there, we actually filled this tube with water and we got a block off plate down here. Aaron's gonna put some pressure on it and uh, see if that water comes out anywhere. You ready, Mr. I'm Nobody ready. Gets Hurt? Nobody's gonna get hurt. Is anybody gonna get wet? Yeah, I'm gonna put my safety glasses on. I don't want an eye injury when this water goes everywhere. <laughs> you got safety glasses on your head. You know that, right? You got four eyes or two? Well, well, they're my dark ones. That's you, really I'm glad at. you're collecting those now. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I don't see anything, buddy. That's a good 100. And, that's more pressure than that thing's ever going to see. So that pretty much answers the question. We probably had a gasket problem. So from here, we're going to make a new gasket and try to get this beast back together. All right, guys, I got everything back in here, back together. There's just not a whole lot to see or a whole lot to show you. Uh, I'll get a run and I'll look at it from the other side and we'll double check and make sure everything's good. But that's as far as it can go. The next step back here is gonna be to get the uh, radiator set back in. But Santa Claus came and we got our new pin. Right. So we're gonna try to put that in first, get that all wrapped up. We'll be good to go. It's just that easy. You're, uh... Where do I need to go? Let me go down. Oh, how close are we there? I can move it a little bit here, you know which way it needs to go. Looks like... I, I don't see it. That must mean you're pretty good. It looks, it's, it looks like you're perfectly lined up with this hole. Yeah, this one here is just off a little bit. Like, it needs to go like right there. I don't know if we can hold it there. It looks like everything... Yeah, you got it. Shove a pin in it, Aaron! Got her, got her, got her. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. All right. Let me get that. We'll have to watch that hole in a second. All right. I think it needs to rotate towards the ground. All right, guys, we about got this project wrapped up. Let me grease these few pins and I'll show you what all we did here.
All right, guys, there she is. I think she's ready, hopefully, hopefully ready for another season of uh, work. But the, the main thing we did to it this time around was replace those pins and bushings down there. They had a lot of wear on them. It allowed dirt to get in there and they'd squeak and grind and make a mess. We did re-shim it uh, to make everything tight. Just kind of um, also thinking, you know, the tighter you get it, less chance you got to get dirt and stuff in there. I believe I got, I couldn't really, I apologize guys. It was hard to get back in there and video. But I got the Returbo return oil fixed, and I got that EGR cooler line fixed. Got the engine serviced, uh, all the filters changed. Kind of gave her a good once over. I think she's good for another year. At least I hope she's good for another year. So um, I got I sent in a video a while back to give you guys my thoughts on this thing now that I've owned it for uh, not quite a year, getting close to being a year, a year and about a month. But uh, a couple things, one, not if you guys watched my channel from the beginning, you know that I wasn't a big fan of skid steers. I'm still not a huge fan of skid steers, but I'm very, very glad I got it. It has been a very handy tool. It's done everything I wanted it to do. The jobs I got it for, I probably couldn't do it with any other piece of equipment other than the skid steer. The more I run it, the more I do enjoy it. Uh, it's not as bad as what it was when I first got going. I still got a lot to learn. I, I still consider myself a rookie on one. But I'm getting the hang of it, and uh, the more I use it, the more I like it. Uh, I, I fully understand the versatility, the power, the strength, uh, all that good stuff. I, I never doubted that. It's just the fact that I don't like running one. But um, it's 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 proved it's it's proved it's kept or it's keep. It's gonna it's gonna stick around. Uh, with that being said, I'm very very happy with my choice in the Kubota. Uh, even with the engine trouble, right after I got it. Uh, I still am very happy with the machine. I will have to say guys, I've ran a lot of skid steers, a lot of skid steers. Don't have a lot of hours on, on them, but I've ran a lot of them. One of the reasons I wasn't a big fan of skid steers is every one I was on was so horribly balanced, it was ridiculous. It seems like you're always getting ready to flip over backwards, or every time you pick something up, you're standing on your nose, and you always have to be careful going over humps and rolls and everything. Guys, this thing right here, when it comes to balance, it's phenomenal it is amazing how well this machine is balanced that's probably the best thing i have to say for it is the balance of this machine is spot on um i've never once felt uncomfortable like i was going to go over backwards or go over forwards uh, unless i'm doing something just really really on the edge um i'm just so impressed with the balance of this machine I can't even, I don't even know how to put it into words how impressed I am with the balance of this machine. That's probably the biggest thing about this machine. Uh, the, the highest praise I can get it, it's probably one of the most balanced skid steers, track loaders, whatever you want to call it. By far, it's one of the most balanced ones I've ever been around. Uh, two, I really like the geometry of the boom, the way it works, the vertical lift. I know a lot of other machines have vertical lifts, uh, but I like the way this one was built. It's pretty simple. It's got just a few moving parts. Uh, it seems to have equal power throughout its stroke. It don't seem to lose as it gets up higher. Uh, it's very stable in all positions. These here do hinder your visibility a little bit, but it, I wouldn't say it's enough. Once you get familiar with the machine and those your corners, um, I, I, I really wouldn't call it. I really wouldn't call it an issue. Um, the machine, as far as operating inside, is very quiet uh it's a little noisy on the outside and it mostly has to do with the uh mostly has to do with the fan but i can't complain about anything really i mean it's it's exceeded my expectations in a lot of in a lot of places the lift capacity is definitely more than it's rated and it's very stable for more than it's rated um i want to be able to move those four thousand pound cubes around with ease it does that absolutely no problem. I could probably grab two of them if I wanted to. Um, spot on with that. That pretty much covers the outside. I mean, it's it's a skid steer. A skid steer is a skid steer, but I'm very happy with my choice. Inside, I 90% of it I love. My biggest complaint, and it's so petty, it's so petty, is whenever that's down, you cannot see your air conditioner controls. I mean, it's just... You're reaching down underneath here trying to fill it, and if I was a bigger guy, that would probably really be aggravating because then you're going to be reaching over from this way because you can't get in that way. Um, I looked at a brand new 2020 Kubota the other day, and it's the same darn way. I don't know, I don't know why that's so 
I mean, I, I, it seems like it's such an easy fix for the boat. I don't, I don't get it. But um, the air conditioner keeps up. It works good. Uh, the heater works really well. I mean, the air conditioner does its job. I wouldn't say it's overly powerful. Um, that may be a spot they can improve on a little bit, and I think they have. I don't really know all the ins and outs. As far as inside the cab, the biggest issue I had is the seat safety switch. And I've I've read and talked to a lot of other Kubota people, and that seems to be, it actually sits in a pouch underneath there, and keeping it just where it's supposed to be uh, tends to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. I finally got it to where I think it needs to be, and I've got it taped into place. Works great for me. Don't work with the crap for Captain Cleveland. <laughs> He's having trouble with it all the time. So uh, I don't know if it needs to be more sensitive or, or the plate. I don't, I don't know. Something's not quite right there. And they may have it fixed on the new ones. Um, I don't know. But I, I love the simplicity of the switches, the key, the joystick, the display. Uh, it's actually a cable throttle to the foot pedal. I don't use the foot pedal a whole lot, but I'm definitely glad that I got it for an option. The roll-up door. The roll-up door was a big deal whenever I was looking at the machine. That's one of the reasons I even started looking at Kubota because uh, I wanted the roll-up door. So here's my take on it. I absolutely love the roll-up door. I've been around Matt's machine. We were unloading that utility bed and stuff and they couldn't even get out. Um, I, I love the roll-up door. The downfall of the roll-up door is twofold. I've replaced the shocks on it and the stupid thing won't stay up and half the time you're cl climbing out it's hitting you in the back which is really aggravating and two it's noisy i've adjusted on it i've adjusted the stops i've adjusted the laps the latches i've got it quieted down a lot but it's still it's still noisy especially whenever it's up so um but i i, I still wouldn't change it i mean the being able to get in and out when the boom in any position and being able to roll it up and talk to people while you're working. Like if you're working side by side with somebody, if you're setting block or doing something tedious and you want to talk to the guy, you know, a lot of guys are sticking out and trying to holler around the machine here through the window. You just flip that window up, have a conversation and, uh, and be good to go. So, um, I definitely like the idea of it. I just noisy and I don't know, I got the shocks from Kubota. They come from the Kubota dealer. I don't know why that, thing won't stay up I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that i still need to look into that but overall guys i'm i'm not a kubota fan i i am i'm a kubota engine fan i am not a kubota equipment fan or tractor fan i really not so it it's big for me to say that i'm really impressed with this kubota but uh, i expect out and met all my needs i went down to the checklist and it was this or takakuchi and this is what I ended up finding first, and I'm very pleased with it. I, I Like I said, I had the engine trouble when I first got it, but we worked through that. Uh, I really don't have any complaints with it. I'm really, really happy with it. It's been a nice addition to the fleet, and uh, we're using it more and more all the time and gaining attachments for it, and uh, glad to have it. So glad to have it as part of the part of the going. So guys, stay tuned. I don't know when you're gonna see it. You've already probably seen some videos on the truck, rebuilding the suspension. Um, it's in here just uh, we had a small hydraulic leak underneath it and it was rain day we just pulled it in to uh, tweak on a few things uh, there'll be videos coming on this we got the 120 in here we've kind of started tying into it so a lot of exciting shop work uh, this winter you guys have already seen some of it more of it to come so that's all I got to say on this one I hope you enjoyed another video um, everybody that's watched the channel thanks a million man it's uh, been growing like crazy it's just just awesome it's nice to have you guys hanging out with in the shop hanging out in the shop with me and coming along with all the uh, ventures and stuff so don't forget to like us on facebook and instagram you can also find us there and get a little bit of an update on what's coming on the channel and if you want any dirt perfect gear dirtperfect1.com or shop dirtperfect1.com you can find us there so that's it guys that's a wrap most importantly don't forget to like subscribe and comment We'll catch you guys on the next one.